Warning. You've reached On The Box with Ray Comfort and are now in a biblical truth zone. Place all questions about theology, current events, and evangelism on the box where they'll be weighed against the truth of God's Word. Ready your hearts and minds. You're about to be inspired and equipped to fulfill the Great Commission. Programming to engage in five, four, three, two, one. Yeehaw. Welcome to On the Box with Ray Comfort, where ratings are so low, it's impossible that they go any lower. Where the hosts are so uninteresting that even rocks get bored. But I won't be here much longer because after yesterday's performance, I've been contacted <laughs> yes. by legendary music producers, and I'm launching my music career. <laughs> Thank you for that, Ray. Yesterday, that spontaneous it was, it opportunity. Was, it was really funny. <laughs> I, I, I really enjoy it. I hope it gives a lot of people a lot of joy. Yeah. You know, Many people have been asking me to sing on a hill far away, so <laughs> I hope they get a that. <laughs> from you. <laughs> we are happy to have Mark Spence back with us. Mark, we missed you. How have you been? Great. You know, I spoke to the student body uh, not yesterday, but the day before, down at Calvary Chapel Bible College. And when I was all done, the host came up to me and he said, you officially took more time during your message than any other guest speaker we've ever had. <laughs> and I didn't know what compliment. he was saying. <laughs> you know, you're right. I, you know, I was told I was going to get 30 minutes, and I timed myself exactly down to the second. I had 30 minutes. Right. That's how long I took, and he thought it, maybe I went over, but I didn't. 30 minutes. And it went well? It, you know, it really did. And in fact, I was actually surprised how many people came up to me and said that they uh, love Way of the Master and they've been impacted by the ministry here. So, wow. You know, you're Thank saying you spoke to the student body. It reminded me of Greg Alsace's foot and mouth when we went to a, a church in L.A. a number of years ago. He came with me, and as we were leaving, it was a great little church. So we're walking out with a pastor, and he says to the pastor, Pastor, you've got a great body. <laughs> <laughs> and we both looked at each other and thought, that's just a sound. Awkward moment. <laughs> yeah, it was an awkward moment. It really was, but uh, it was funny. That's funny. Very funny, friends. Well, we hope you've been enjoying the laughter and uh, the <laughs> instruction. We try to get some, some serious. Enjoying the laughter. This. I was having some laughter the day I didn't enjoy. <laughs> it was awful laughter. Right. So anyhow, we are going to continue on and hit some content today, believe it or not. <laughs> okay, this is an email from Alyssa. Recently on the show, Mr. Comfort was talking briefly about how troubling it was that Christian teenagers don't read their Bibles. I'm a teenager that has for many years struggled to get into a regular routine of reading my Bible. Now I'm very happy to say that I read my Bible on a regular basis and am so greatly blessed for doing so. However, I have several Christian friends that struggle in this area. School, friends, and video games always seem to take first place. I want to encourage them to get their priorities straight. I find it difficult, though, to do this without sounding pushy. Because of this, I end up saying nothing. So I guess my question is, how can I encourage my friends to dive into God's Word without being pushy? Ray. Um, you know, when you become a Christian... Uh, something supernatural happens. God takes His law and writes it upon your heart and causes you to walk in His statutes. That means, just what it says, that He <laughs> takes His law and <laughs> writes it upon. And the essence of God's law is to love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. So as a Christian, having that work of the law, that miracle new birth within you, uh, it, you naturally love God with heart, mind, soul, and strength, and video games come second. <laughs> Because this is God's word. This is your eternity. And, and you said here, Alicia, Alisa? Alyssa. Alyssa. Um, you don't want to sound pushy. Sound pushy. Get slappy. Seriously, we're yeah. talking <laughs> about people's eternity. If you're a doctor and someone was doing something that could bring about their death, you would get angry at them. You'd get pushy because this is, this is more serious than a heart attack. Right. Uh, but when people put video games above the Lord uh, and other priorities drop in instead, uh, something's got to be wrong, right. you know. Uh, you know, when you join an army, that the essence of making an army work is discipline. Mm -hmm. And when you become a, a Christian, you become a disciple of Christ. Jesus said, "If you uh, continue in my word, then you're my disciples indeed." And you know the truth, and the truth will make you free. So, when you become a Christian, you give up, you surrender all, you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. So, you don't say, "Okay, Lord, what will I do? Read your word or play a video game?" You say, "No, I'm a disciple. I'm right. a soldier of Christ." Yeah, and Alyssa, you know, the question could be is are these friends of yours really in need of the gospel as opposed to trying to get them to partake of something that 
really is a byproduct of being a Christian, you might consider, do they need to hear the gospel? Uh, because maybe they don't know the Lord. And again, maybe they do, and they need to get their priorities straight, like you're saying. Uh, but, you know. And if you have to force feed a baby, something's wrong. You know, yeah. if you've got a healthy baby, it, it just about swallows the bottle or whatever it's feeding on. <laughs> <laughs> the whole bottle? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, Mark, what do you say? Well, you know, certain confrontation is absolutely necessary. I think it's a good thing to be a fruit inspector. We don't need to come across like we're judging everybody and judging everything. Right. But there's certain times where, you, hey, I'm just communicating. Where are you at in the Word? I haven't been reading the Word. Well, why not? Well, what's going on inside your life? You call yourself a Christian. Well, you want to walk as he walked, and you need to see where he's walked. You need to get inside the Word of God. And Scripture says, sanctify them by your truth. Your Word is truth. So how do you know what you're doing is correct? How do you know you're being sanctified? How do you know you're doing what God has called you to do? He's giving you marching orders, and the only way to know those marching orders is to get inside the Word. So in a very loving, respectful way, share that with Him. Who cares the way they respond? Leave the results up to God. But you need to be faithful with what God has called you to do. Be a fruit inspector. You know, if we aren't desiring the sincere milk of the word, we're in disobedience because the scripture commands desire the sincere milk of the word. Right. So it's, it's, it's an act of your will. It's like when someone's got anorexia, I find that's one of the most frightening diseases there is. When you see someone in front of you that you love that is, that is, that is starving to death before your eyes because they don't have an appetite. Food, which is supposed to be a delight to them and, and pleasurable and cause them to salivate, doesn't do this. So there's something radically wrong right. within their heart. So we should never be, if we're a healthy Christian, uh, have the spiritual anorexia. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Scripture says, how can a young man keep his way pure? By keeping it according to his word. Your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Mm. I remember before I became a Christian, I used to go to a church with my friend from time to time. And I remember the, the youth pastor would say, okay, get out your Bibles, turn to Matthew 4, verse 3. I remember sitting there and thinking at one time, I will never learn how to use a Bible because it was all so foreign to me. You know, what's Matthew? What's, yeah, I'd never read the word, you know? I remember I, as a new Christian, I had the same experience, but it was much bigger. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. no. <laughs> but I remember looking at the Bible and going, I want to conquer this. Right. I, I don't only, only want to know what's in it. I want to know what's not in it. Right. Because that's a bigger thing. I, it's easy to say, I know what's in the Bible in Psalm 53, but if someone says... Uh, this is in the Bible. You have to have all knowledge to know what's not in the Bible. And it thrills me after 40 years if someone says, you know, you, you, the Bible says this, this, and no, it doesn't. Right. You know, they say you can work your way to heaven. It doesn't right. say that. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, I was saying, so I, I, I remember thinking, I'll never learn how to use a Bible. And then after coming to Christ, and before that, I tried to open the Bible and just, I, I, it was just foreign. Seriously, it was mm -hmm. like trying to read something in another language. Yeah. And then after I came to Christ, I could not stop consuming the Word. Yeah. You know, and who would have known when I thought in those days I'll never even know how to read the Bible. I'd become a Bible teacher, you know. And, and uh, I, I just could not. I remember in those early days discovering, especially the Proverbs. Love the Proverbs. Oh, yes. Just all this wisdom. It was just yeah. like I couldn't stop and taking it and then sharing it with others. Keeps you out of trouble, Proverbs. Don't, take, uh, don't get in someone else's arguments. It's like taking an oh. angry dog by both its ears. You're going to get <laughs> bitten. You know. But remember, you brought back a memory for me when I was a new Christian. I had such a hunger for the Word. I went out and bought one of those, purchased one of those great big family Bibles, you know, very thick ones. Right. And my parents caught me reading it once when they came around <laughs> to visit me and looked through the window, and there I was with this huge Bible. Uh. And I'd only been a Christian for about two weeks, and they must have thought, this is the height of fanaticism. Right. You know, he's gone to that huge Bible. Oh, you know, I remember one of my really close friends, he was, a, you know, from a Christian home, and he'd want to come over and play video games. And so, you know, he'd, he'd, he'd come over and he'd say, but man, you know, my parents, and he wasn't, he wasn't serving the Lord at the time, he said, my parents won't let me come over unless we're going to have a Bible study. I said, well, that's a problem, because if you come over and bring a Bible, my parents are going to think you're a freak. <laughs> so he'd come over. I'd say, dude, can you put your Bible in the mailbox, <laughs> please, before you come in? So he'd come to my house, put his Bible in the mailbox, oh, come in, we'd play video games, then he'd go home. But wow, what a, what a total turnaround once you get God's Word yeah. into you. But this is a good topic. Mark, I want to go back to you. You know, one of the distinct things about your kids is their love for the Lord. And uh, the Word included, but in a general sense— how, how can Christian parents, who are probably watching us now, cultivate in their kids a desire for the Lord? Well, you, I think the greatest thing that you can do for your kids or what you can do for your spouse is for you 
to walk deeply with the Lord. Amen. It's for you to cultivate a relationship with God, to fall in love with your maker, mm -hmm. to not be so caught up with American Idol and The Voice and this reality show and that thing and getting away from the kids to go do a round of golf with your buddies. You know, I, I, I look at my life and as I examine it, you know, I want to be faithful with the ministry which God has given me, first and foremost with my family. So I crave those times with my kids. This morning I played uh, my... Uh, two of my kids chess and one of them beat me at chess for the first time he's 10 years old beat me at chess i couldn't believe it i, I overthrew I can, yeah. the table <laughs> he's actually not that intelligent that kid i know that kid <laughs> <laughs> sorry mark you're saying something profound Go ahead. yes i mean so everything is a teachable moment you know so i'm not trying to rush away to go do this activity or do that activity away from my kids i'm thinking of ways how i can include my kids in everything mm. so instead of trying to sit in front of american idol I'm trying to sit in, in front of a chess uh, table, a game, with my kids and talking to them. How are you doing? Always trying to pour into them, and I'm always talking about the Lord with them. Right. So when I go to the grocery store, I'm not going to the grocery store because we're out of ketchup. I'm going to the grocery store because I realize it is a teachable moment with my child, and I want to fill uh, the great commandment. I want to be able to share the gospel with other people. I want to love my creator. This is the way the Christian thinks, and I think the kids just get it. They grab a hold of it, and they learn, and they're rising up, and they're sitting down, and they just see mom and dad doing it, and then they're going to catch that same zeal, I believe, and follow in your footsteps. That's wow. what we do, and that's what we try to do inside of our household all the time. And that's normal biblical Christianity. Don't play the hypocrite, because if anything causes kids to get better, it's seeing a parent be a hypocrite. Right. You know, we're talking about you know reading the Word and it being foreign to us. An, an analogy would be driving into the sun. Mm. It's just a pain. You can't see things clearly. Your windshield's dirty, and then, then you drive away from the sun, and everything is so clear because the sun's behind you. And that's what, like reading the Word. Before I was born again, reading the Word was just, I, I couldn't see clearly. Right. And then as soon as I was saved, it was just like there was a light behind me illuminating that Word and causing it to come yeah, alive. Yeah, and you know, it's instant too, because it wasn't like, uh, months had gone by, and now I kind of understood biblical terminology or had a concept of, you know, biblical, con you know, <laughs> concepts or whatever. But it was instant. Like, I woke up the next morning, and I couldn't wait to intake God's Word. It's kind of like being born. Right. You're breathing. You're alive, <laughs> you know? It's, it's just natural amazing. to you. Absolutely. Yeah, and Mark, I love what you said. And I love the fact that you didn't just say, sit down and read the Word with your kids, which is also right. important. But you're talking about a, a, a natural activity or normal activity of sitting down and playing a game with your, your children, but that having an influence and an impact in their life, you know? Yes, what are you laughing at, Ray? Mark Spence is reading something when you're pouring out your heart to him. <laughs> what a great thing what? he was saying. <laughs> What's That's new? It's amazing. I can see way over to the other studio, and there he is pouring over something on his on his computer while you're saying, Mark, what I love about this is that you're just so blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Did you see the cotton balls in his ears? Yeah, yeah. I guess so. All right. But example, the power of example. It goes such a long way to stir up youth for the glory of God. And on that note, we have a video that we'd like to show you. So video people, please roll the video. <laughs> video people. <laughs> hey guys, my name is Tim Schmoyer and welcome to the Dare to Share blog. I'll tell you a little story from when I was growing up. I was involved in a youth group really in high school, but I was very involved in a group called Student Venture, which is the high school division of Campus Crusades for Christ. And there was a high school leader in that organization who took a personal interest in me and really started investing and pouring into me. I remember hanging out with him many times and almost every time I would be with him, we couldn't go more than like an hour or two with him stopping to talk to some random stranger about Christ. Just the brain got up, started just a normal conversation, and I was like, oh, here we go. Bob's going to talk to someone about Christ. And I kind of became just, I just became used to it. You know, it wasn't a big deal. Seeing him share his faith over and over and over again, almost every time we hung out, really became contagious to me and is what really started influencing me to start sharing my faith with my friends. There's been a lot of research done about this from Dave Rand and Terry Linhart and they found that students who shared their faith the most and the ones who saw the most people come to Christ through their efforts are kids who see it modeled for them on a regular basis. What they mean by regular? Well, kids who saw their parents or an adult sharing Christ with them at least once a week, they saw about eight of their friends come to know Christ. Kids who only saw it maybe once every other week or once a month, only about four of their friends came to Christ. But if we're honest about what our kids are really seeing now with their parents and with maybe even us, 
probably not seeing that happen at least once a week. So if you really want your kids to share Christ, we have to model it, we have to talk about it. It has to start with us, it has to flow out of our lives, and it has to be less about a program and more about people, investing into people and into kids, and developing them to be the leaders that God wants them to be so that they are passionate and equipped to share their faith with their friends and to talk about it. If you've been reading any of my posts on the Dare to Share blog recently, you know how big of a proponent I am that we really need to be modeling this. We need to be setting the example, not just telling them stories from our life, but actually sharing Christ with other people in front of them. This research just indicates and confirms that the more kids see adults and parents and youth leaders actually sharing Christ with people, the more they do it and the more likely they are to have their friends come to know Christ. So if we really want our youth group kids to be leading their friends to Christ, they have to be seeing us taking that initiative with the people that were around as well. I know that's how it worked for me. I mean, when I was in high school, evangelism is something that me and my friends would go do for fun just at the mall on a Saturday night. We'd get together, we'd carpool over there, and we'd spend a couple hours just talking to people about Jesus. That sounds weird for high school students, but I know it's possible. A group of us did it, and I know a lot of your kids would do it as well. I only did it because I was so comfortable with it because I saw a youth leader modeling it for me over and over and over again, and then it was just a natural thing for me to do. I like that guy. Yeah, and I like it when there's no gaps between sentences in the editing, and I wish <laughs> life was like that because gaps between sentences just waste time. Huh? Hmm. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But anyhow, um, power of example, yes. friends. Power of example. Ray, I know... That your kids grow, grew up not watching you preach the gospel. Not that much. <laughs> They're pretty sure. Watching you preach yes. the gospel. I mean, Rachel has stories of going out with you to yes, uh, you the, know, square the square in New like Zealand. Uh, Mark and, and I take our kids out to preach the gospel. Uh, and, and we've seen their desire grow. Mark, your kids love giving out tracts. Don't they? Yeah, you know, in fact, uh, this Saturday, I'm going to be videotaping them, handing out tracts in a bunch of different locations. Um, trying to put that together in a little video. Yeah, you know, I'd like to be able to show it. I'm going to be able to show it, Lord willing, here at the homeschool convention. I put together a whole list of ideas, the way kids can do it. And, you know, my kids are handing out tracks in many different places. We go inside Walmart, they're dropping uh, coins and million-dollar bills in pockets or in uh, cases of soda, different places like that. Might as well put together a little video and then make that available to people so people can actually see kids doing what adults are supposed to be doing and teaching their kids on how to do it. Well, Mark, if you're going to videotape, remember that under 18 and you need to get the parents' uh, permission. Yes. Your kids. An instructive moment. Yes. And, uh, you know, my girls, like I've mentioned before, absolutely love sharing the gospel. We'll be going out, in fact, tonight. And they yearn for it. They, I hear them talking around the house. I can't wait to go share the gospel tonight. That surprises tonight. me because I know my grandchildren. I know your kids are the same people. Um, and they're so um, sweet. Right. If you know what I mean, and yeah. yet you come, they're going out to battle oh. and, and loving it. Oh. And especially Summer is very, very shy, quiet, but she makes the approach. Yeah, yeah. It blows me it's away. It is such a joy to see. But again, example, 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 like you saw in that video. And on that note, speaking of youth and talking about encouragement, this is something we've been encouraged by. It's an email from Jeremy Doyle. I just wanted you to know how blessed Why Valley. Why you sing this? I just <laughs> no, please. Uh, <laughs> We've started something, <laughs> folks. I just wanted you to know how blessed Valley Baptist Church's high school ministry in Bakersfield, California is by what you guys do. We trained a group of about 38 students with the Roots Evangelism DVD series, then took them to Indio, California for a mission trip. God moved in amazing ways there. The Evangelism DVD series Oh, no, I just read the same line. The students felt very <laughs> equipped to share the gospel. We brought hundreds of our favorite $1 million tracts. We saw students. We saw 30 people. We saw th- what I keep reading the same line. Well, why don't you put your finger on okay, it? Okay, that's what I'll do. We saw 30 people make decisions, and four of our students decided to surrender their lives to ministry. The best thing about the trip is that the students have not stopped sharing their faith. This is our first week back, and they have already shared the gospel with teachers to their family members, friends, out in public places, and all over their campuses. On Tuesday at lunch, one of our students open air preached at lunch in the middle of his school. Look at that, folks. Look at that picture. Today, I brought him 60 tacos to give away to draw a crowd, and he did it again. The attached picture is of Marcus today. A couple of other students open air preached at other campuses in Bakersfield, and one of them got taken to the dean's office for open air preaching. Oh, how nice that. Go? They kind of commend him? Uh, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Give him an award. The dean is going to decide if they will be allowed to open air preach in the future. 
while he may have been taken away, his, while he was being taken away, his brother was able to continue preaching the gospel and answer questions. He said there were 50 to 60 students before his brother got taken away and about 30 when he continued preaching. God is moving in amazing ways here and, and students that didn't even go on the trip are catching the fire. Thank you guys for all that you do. You will continue to see orders from us for tracts. God bless you all. Wow. You, had one, you read one line nine times, but <laughs> nobody noticed. <laughs> nobody even realized. <laughs> no. But that is so encouraging. Oh, that, that is very uplifting. God and God bless you guys as you continue to preach the gospel, pull your hearts out, and let that fire spread. You know, we're seeing that now in our Spanish language outreach ministry. Mm. Uh, Miguel just sent us a picture yesterday of one of uh, the brothers that, that's connected with our ministry preaching to a crowd of 200 people mm. in Mexico. Yeah. And we're seeing that. And another guy who went to one of the academies going out now and taking teams regularly. So we love the process of duplication. Ray, what's that saying you always quote? I'd rather do the work. Yeah, D.L. Rather Moody said, I'd rather do the work of a thousand than... I'd <laughs> 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 rather set... <laughs> I'd rather set a thousand to work than do the work of a thousand. Amen. And it's wonderful. I love this tacos thing, giving away 60 tacos. Oh, you're remembering the tacos from Mexico, right? Yes, we yeah. I mean, that's a, a great thing to do, to put something in someone's mouth so they'll use their ears. And I think that's it's, it shows love. <laughs> yeah, they can't heckle you while they're eating. And it's sensible. You're going <laughs> to cut down your hecklers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Very encouraging. Thank you guys for writing in. And on that note, please write in to us and tell us about these sorts of things. On the box.us and also join us on Facebook. Ray's on Facebook, I'm on Facebook, Mark's on Facebook, and be our friends. Be our <laughs> friends. <laughs> Where did that come from? That you know what that was? That was not thinking while I'm reading a note that Alan wrote on his little board. Ah, and be our friends. Oh. Be our friends. Mark, my friend, tell us about the tool of the day. Yeah, well the tool of the day kind of deals with what you were just dealing with, and that is our roots series right here. People contact us and they say, all right, I got it. I see what you're saying. I understand where you're going. How do I teach this curriculum to my youth? And it's designed for the junior high and high school age group of people. And this is a six-week video-driven youth evangelism curriculum. And it's six half-hour episodes from The Way of the Master, season four of our TV show. You also have on there a study guide that you can download in PDF format. So you can purchase this through Living Waters or you can actually, um, in a hard copy, or you can actually download everything, purchase it through Living Waters as well. Now I'm going to be speaking uh, later on. We're going to talk about that, I believe, in yeah. just a little bit. But I'm really bringing uh, one main item to th these uh, 10,000 people that I'm uh, going to be speaking to with the Teach Them Diligently conference. And that's this item. This is the item that you need to get a hold of if you have a small group of people that are junior high and high school age. It's designed and directed towards them, and there's some really unique footage shot with the Duggars. You may be familiar with them with 19 kids and counting, so you don't want to miss that. We have a video that we want to show you, a promo, dealing with roots right now. John 16, Jesus tells us that there will be some who will murder in the name of God. Sometimes the Word of God falls on hard hearts. Sometimes it finds a soft heart. Our job as Christians is to keep sowing seed or preaching the gospel regardless of how people react. Roots is perfect for families, youth groups, and homeschoolers. This fast-moving six-week training course includes printable discussion guides and quizzes. Order yours today at livingwaters.com. If you order Roots today, we'll drop it a free taco. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Got to keep your word now, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we hope uh, you were stirred by Roots. Again, the folks that wrote into us talked about how their event was sparked by taking their teens through Roots. So make sure to get a hold of that. And uh, a lot of youth groups, probably over a 1,000 uh, churches and groups and families have now gotten a hold of Roots. And, oh, roots um, has been so fruitful. Oh, yeah. yeah. Lots of, lots of uh, fruits Branches from there. Roots. <laughs> fruits from Roots. <laughs> Anyhow, Mark mentioned the speaking event that he has coming up. Mark, please tell our friends a little more about that. 
Yeah, at teachthemdiligently.net, teachthemdiligently.net, there is a homeschool convention that will be going on all throughout the month of May. Three different locations that I'm going to be speaking at. And if you're in the area, you're going to want to be a part of that. There are some phenomenal speakers there. Originally, they, they told me that there was going to be 7,000 people at each <coughs> convention, and then they sent me an email saying, you know what? They are busting out the seams with people, and now it's looking like 10,000 people are going to be at each location. You do want to sign up. I'm not sure if they're going to take those out the door, so you want to go to that website. And the locations, let's see, the first part of May, it'll be Spartanburg, South Carolina. The middle of May, the following uh, two weekends later, uh, th there they are. You see them on uh, your screen there, May 16th to the 18th. We have Nashville, Tennessee, and Omaha, Nebraska, May 30th through June 1st. Bodie Bauckham, Ken Ham, R.C. Sproul Jr., Todd Friel, Pam Tebow, um, Ray Comfort. Oh, no, Ray. Ray's They've got you all in little bubbles there, isn't that Little sweet? bubbles. <coughs> pop your bubble. But you know what? You want to be a part of that. There's something like 50 speakers that are going to be packed in there on this weekend from Thursday night all the way to Saturday night. So if you're in those areas, you want to come and say hi, be a part of that amazing time. You want to be part of it. Wonderful. Wonderful. All right. On to some questions. This is from Kelly. My daughter, Emma, has always been open with her faith in God and is now 11 years old and just started the fifth grade and wants to start actively sharing her faith with her friends, classmates, and even teachers. But being that she's so young, I'm not sure how to advise her on doing that. The ideas you give on your show are wonderful, but not age appropriate for kids. Just wondering what you guys would suggest for her. Ray, a young one that wants to be <coughs> Hey, kids, track is great. Right. You know, just give out some tracks. I think kids have got the, the legal right to do that to their classmates. So if I was 11 years old, that would I, that's what I'd do. Well, I'd check <laughs> with my wife to see if she'd allow me to do it because right. I'm only 11. But, yeah. <laughs> check with your wife when you're 11? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of stupid, <laughs> stupid thought. It? So it's funny. I remember Julia, uh, when she was maybe five or six, she was on the playground playing with a little girl, and she said, do you know the Lord? <laughs> and the little girl, go, the little girl goes, yes. And Julia goes, who is he? <laughs> 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 she didn't want to let her off that easy. Oh, that's but, great. Uh, but yeah, you know, make sure to uh, to check out our, uh, is it Albert Brainstein tract? Is that what we're calling it, Alan? Or Hey Kids? Oh. No. Albert hey, but hey, Albert. Hey, kids. Albert Brainstein. Brainstein. It's all the same. Brainstein? Yeah. Brainstein. Brainstein. <laughs> hey, Albert. Hey, Albert. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, you, can, you can get those tracts here through Living Waters, so that's something that you can do. But just uh, advising your child or your children, uh, hey, talk to people about Jesus. If anyone can get away with it, it's kids, <laughs> right? You'd think we'd know what it was called, wouldn't you? Isn't it, it's on the homepage. I think there's a picture of it. Is it Daniel on the homepage? Yeah. It's our Hey Kids track. Uh, it's a storefront, yeah. Yeah, Hey Kids, right, Daniel? It's oh, <laughs> Albert Brainstein. Brainstein. <laughs> Anyhow, friends, you thank you so much for first. joining us. Our triple dog dare today is to send a note to an unsafe family member and get them the gospel. God bless. For Ray questions about On the Box with Ray Comfort <laughs> or to submit questions for future shows, please email onthebox at livingwaters.com. That's onthebox at livingwaters.com. On the Box with Ray Comfort is an outreach of Living Waters. For more resources to inspire and equip you to fulfill the Great Commission, check out livingwaters.com or call toll-free 1-800-437-1893. Now go and preach the gospel.